at the Alamo Dome for the KSAT Pigskin Classic, which continues, all right? We've already had a lot happen. Yes, we had one game last night, of course, and two games, and boy, a lot of great action. Of course, Jefferson just beat Uvalde 25 to 14, and of course, here comes all of the folks dressed in blue and orange from Brandeis. They're going to be taking on O'Connor tonight, and this is one of those, I don't even know if you call it, call it a crosstown rivalry, rivalry or a cross the street rivalry because these two <laughs> schools are right next to each other and a couple of definite powerhouses. Love the atmosphere in here. Yes, it is definitely, just as much as it is a football game, a social event, and Mike really loves that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, you know, obviously it's the focus is on the game, but you know, so many, so many of the the kids come here the just to, to have a good time and, and kind of mingle with their friends and everything, and a great place to be, uh, especially on tonight when it's 102 degrees outside. Right. As That's one right thing now. the kids who were on the show, because we've had the chance to have a lot of these kids on the show. And I yeah. think that's what's great is highlighting the students, the dance teams, the cheer squads, and the bands and getting to know them a little better. It, it is. And and the spirit that they all have, because of course, you know, it, they always talk about how football in Texas is, is definitely a religion. I remember last year at the Pigskin Classic, our company president was down here and her husband had said to her, he goes, okay, we, we live in Michigan. I, and me, also, I'm from yeah. Michigan. And it was like, yeah, we thought football was big here. This is this, it's on another level. Yeah, this is on another level yeah. compared to anything else out here, and yeah. all the in, and all the people that get involved with it is, yes. is so fantastic. You know, too. the support from the family, the friends, like you said, the kids that are, you know, the you know team training staff, folks, oh, that, yes, and folks that wear wigs that look like that's that. right, who bring the spirit. Yes, they do, right there. And of course, we got to debut our KSAT mascot. Yes, indeed. Mike is running around somewhere here. I'm here, but the other Mike, <laughs> uh, the good looking one, is, is running around. And uh, by the way, if you get a chance to take a picture with him, if you're down here or you see him out and about anytime else, make sure you uh, post that. But you know, also, we want to give a big shout out to all the folks literally just about everybody that we work with at KSAT that have put this event on again and have done yeoman's duty. Everybody Absolutely. that's standing behind that all camera cameras, right now. Everything. All the folks running around out here back at the station, you know, with any sort of big live broadcast like this, there's little hiccups here and there, but boy, oh boy, everybody's just tackled it and done a fantastic job. And of course, the KSAT insiders. Yes, they are having that party. Of course, go to ksat.com slash insider for more details yep and you can go to uh, just sign up it's free to sign up and you get all of the the kind of the scoop on all the information you get to go to cool and, stuff yes indeed <laughs> and I mean like you get to go to that party you get uh, you know information about all the great events that that we do all the parades that we mm -hmm. cover coming up because that's going to be starting once again because we've got Muertos Fest of course that's going to be coming up in uh, November and then of course we've got parades coming in next year mm -hmm. and of course the Alamo Dome I mean so many events are held here but yes it is all about the football we were talking with Richard Oliver just yet uh, yesterday it seems like longer but it was just <laughs> yesterday and he said it takes about what 36, about, yeah, about 36 hours okay and the field is is just seams of really strong velcro you can see the seams on the field putting yeah, it together they, they lay it all down and of course this year we were uh, so impressed with the fact that we have our, our logo right in the center of the our field our jerseys match the field and yes they do and <laughs> the interesting little factoid they have three different end zones that they use here one for UTSA, one for the Alamo Bowl, and one that is done up like our end zone is done up. Absolutely. All right. Well, we are going to send it back to the, the KSAT Studios. Yep. Got a quick news update. And don't forget, O'Connor and Brian Brandeis is going to be kicking off in just about an hour. And thank you very much, guys. And welcome back live to the Alamo Dome as we continue the KSAT Pigskin Classic. So there's no doubt that whenever Brandeis and O'Connor face off, it's always a big time matchup, no matter the sport and no matter the venue. It's something that really brings that entire community together. And that's what the two head coaches of these football programs really want you to know. And these two guys go way back as well. So yes, this is a rivalry, but it's also about respect. KSAT 12 sports producer Daniel Villanueva sat down with both head coaches to get their thoughts on this marquee matchup. <laughs> Uh, it would have to be because I moved in to Judson ISD and 
probably the first time I went up to Jepson because your class was already there. And probably like in the weight room or the football field, probably somewhere around there. So you didn't get there until high school? I got there, right, I didn't get there to high school. That's right. But that's when, remember, Kitty Hawk was, freshman class was at Kitty Hawk. Yes. Yeah. David's always been a leader. Let me say that. <laughs> David has always been a leader. He's always been a leader. From what I remember of Charlie, <clears throat> wasn't a big guy. He was really fast. And he was he was easy to talk to. He was a uh, really friendly guy. And the other thing that was kind of neat about it is my friends were his friends, and his friends were my friends, and we were all friends. We, we, just, we just hug when we get to the stadium, and we have a little conversation before, but Again, I, I don't think it's what people think it is. You know, I think they want us to be angry at each other. We're not angry with each other. We're going, we're, both teams are going to play their, their, their guts out. They, you know, and there's going to be ups and downs and then people are going to be screaming and hollering and that's what makes it special. And I mean, we're, we're less than five miles from each other. So how do you not have a rival? And you, you, want, the, you, you want to be able to have bragging rights for a year. At, at the end of the day, uh, we're going to be friends no matter who wins this game. You know, and we just wanted, again, bring the community together and having fun in a great environment. There's so many things that are also involved, other groups that are involved in this, that, that can say, hey, I remember the Brandeis O'Connor game in 2023. I was there, I did this or I did that. And, and, and so for us to be a part of that, I, I mean, that's special. Not everybody gets to have this. You know, you can coach for 30 years and not be in a really big rival game or be in a really big game, but we have the opportunity the first game of the year to do it. To me, this is one of the best rivalries in the state, not just the city, I think it's the state. I'm, I'm probably the newest to this rivalry, and um, me and Dave were on the board of directors, and before our meeting started, I asked him about it, because I, and I agree with just one of the biggest rivalries in the state, and I didn't realize that. And um, he told me, like, I'm going way back now, back, back. Um, it's compared to the Judson Churchill rivalry back in the day. And when that game will, would fill Alamo Stadium. Um, now let's bring it up to last year, because last year was the first year we played in the Dome. And we're warming up normal game. It was when we came out and seeing both sides. It, it was amazing. You know, I, got, I get goosebumps just thinking about it now and just seeing the com both communities, you know. I look up, I looked at our community, I was like, oh yeah. Looked up and saw that community, I was like, oh yeah. I turn around and look at the guys and like, this is gonna be fun, you know. And then the respect that both programs have. Um, it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be amazing. You know, the, uh, the, uh, the thing too that makes it special is why I tell our kids that you don't understand right now, you will one day, because what Charlie was talking about takes me back to 1983. It's 1982 when we were playing. And the feeling that you have, you don't get that playing checkers. And that's what makes this such a special deal. And, and trying to get our kids, our communities to understand that this is a special night. And we need to go out there and make it the very best we can. And whoever wins, somebody's gotta win the game. Somebody's gonna win, somebody's gonna lose. But at the end of the day too, whoever it is and whatever it is, it, it's not going to define our season. It's just going to help um, make this year special for the guys that get to play and participate in it. And thank you very much, Coach Molesky and Coach Bruce. A very cool interview. Job well done to you as well, Cash V. All right, let's check in with Lee Waldman. I believe she's hanging out with the Lassos. The Lassos and the Lariats, Larry, you know, we are still not over this incredible win from Jefferson's High School. Let's hear from our These beautiful ladies have waited with me for, for quite some time right now because they're just so excited for the kickoff of the season. Whoever wants to talk about just how excited y'all are. We're super excited. We're so glad to start off our last first game here at the Alamo Dome. And it was a really great experience. Yeah, this is a senior year moment that you're never going to forget, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. We're so excited to continue this win and, to, and take it for like the whole rest of the year and um, just be so our boys and show up for them and give them all the spirit that they need to keep on serving those wins. 
Yeah, this is some good momentum as you guys go into this next season. I mean, a really huge win that happened here. Also, air conditioning. Yes. yes. Oh, my goodness. The other games that we play it have no air conditioning, and we're just going to have to look pretty and cheer the whole time. But this was honestly, for our first game, it was a wonderful scene and just winning and taking that W, and we continue to take that W. You know, so I think we did really good, and let's go Mustangs. Let's go Mustangs. What is your hope for the year? What is your hope for your team? I hope that we just keep this winning streak going and we take home the win next game. There we go. Let's get one more cheer for our Mustangs. Yeah. Y'all, they are so excited. The outfit's cute. We love the excitement of these beautiful ladies right here. The rest of their team went out. So we're going to let you guys go out with the rest of your team. Let's hear for this Mustang right here. Let's go, Mustang! Yeah. Y'all, we're going to keep this excitement going for our last game of our KSAP Pigskin Classic. We cannot wait to see the rest of these teams out here, what they have to offer. Thank you guys again. We appreciate y'all. We appreciate your awesome coach here for we're going to send things back over to Larry. I'm going to hang out with the lasso with Larry at Larry. Welcome back to the KSAT Pigskin Classic. I'm SA Live's Jen Tobias Strusky, and we are behind the wheel of an all new Silverado with Daryl Dixon, president of the San Antonio area Chevy Dealers Local Marketing Association. Daryl, all right, this is our third time we've been here. Now we get to get inside this beautiful truck. Tell me more about it. Well, Jen, this truck is completely redesigned inside with a a brand new command center, if you will, 13.4 inch screen, heads up display, uh, just to name a few features. And it's also high tech, right? So tell me about some of the technology. Yeah, so the technology, this truck has front and rear sensors to help you with parking in the front, backing up in the rear. Uh, it has multi USB uh, charging ports. It's like an office on wheels. Amazing. I have to say, my dad just got one of these and he is loving it. So how can it be customized? I'm sure that's an option. Yes, you can go to MySaChevy.com, choose the San Antonio area Chevy dealer of your choice and order it, customize it the way you like. Right. As simple as that. Now, what were some of your favorite moments today? You know, just seeing Uvalde back in the community and, and watching them be out in public and I just ask that we continue to pray for Uvalde as they rebuild emotionally. Yes, I agree. Thank you so much, Daryl. Thank you for showing us this. We are going to send it back to Larry at the desk. All right. Thank you. And hey, Jen, you're, you're supposed to ask Daryl if he can give us a ride. Right? We need a ride. David Sears is over here. He wants to take a no, I'll spin in that as well. I don't want to ride it. I want to drive it. You want to drive it? I want to drive it. <laughs> You're more eager than I am. Give me the keys, baby. All right. So, hey, this is the press box. Uh -huh. It's replacing the sports guys. Right. And the press box is exactly what the sports guys used to be, but with a new name. Okay. We're like just going to talk about sports. I like that. Yeah. So that's so, good stuff. Yeah, but no free food. Uh -oh, okay. Who are you looking for? Right, right. Look who's here. Oh, do, are look we, we going to get Heinz Ward? I think we're going to get Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward. How you doing? Good you. Yeah, good to see you, good to see you as well. How are you? Good, good, good. So, Heinz, uh, yeah. what brings you here today? Well, I'm coming here to support the Pigskin Classic. You know, it's a kickoff of the football season. And listen, I remember what it feels like, you know, uh, maybe not coming into the Alamo Dome playing the, the, the kickoff uh, game to start the season, but you know, I understand, you know, for the seniors trying to go out and put on a great season so they can maybe one day get a scholarship. For the freshmen walking in and like, oh, you know, you're nervous and trying to go out there and make some plays. And then the sophomores and juniors, you're just trying to not be that guy to mess it up. So, uh, but it's fun, man. It's still football. And anytime I get a chance to, to come back and watch high school football, man, that's where it all started for me. It just brings back a lot of great memories. Born in Georgia, or born overseas, but you're raised in Georgia, went to high school football in Georgia. Played there, went to University of Georgia, but this is Texas. Yeah. And I know Georgia's big. Yeah, this is the Mecca. <laughs> this is the Mecca of high school football. It all starts here. And, and for these kids to get an opportunity to come out, to come play uh, at the Alamo Dome, to put on a show in front of their families and friends, that's really what it's all about. What are these kids going through? I mean, what, what's it like to be in a facility like this? I mean, you kind of mentioned it, but, but what's it like for those kids right now to be in this kind of facility? You've been in here. Yeah. You know what this place can do. Oh, yes. Uh, this, this place gets rocking. Um, you know, for me, the nerves of, of, of the home opener, you know, having the, the first kickoff to start the season off, you're a little nerves with anxiety. You want to go out there. You want to put on a good show. And, of course, 
being a rival game, you know, it's all about bragging rights. So you want to start the year off good and, and uh, the, whoever comes out on top, you got bragging rights for the rest of the year. That's really what it comes down to. What are your memories from your high school days? And is there one that just you will never absolutely forget? Yeah, I mean, I was a starter. I was starting quarterback my sophomore year, and then I had the worst game of my life. <laughs> uh, the home over. I think I fumbled the ball twice. I threw like two interceptions. And the one thing my coach said, listen, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And we end up, we put a string of wins together, victories together. We ended the season strong. We finished seven and three and had an opportunity to make it to the playoffs. It was a three-way tire in our division, and unfortunately, we were voted out of the playoffs. So I never really got that opportunity, but playing in a venue like the Alamo Dome, so much tradition here. You know, me being a first-time head coach last season, running out here for the first time, the nerves and anxiety, it's almost, I'm not going to put it right there with the Super Bowl, but it's pretty darn close to running out here, man. So the nerves of these players, you want to come out here and put on a great showing in front of the home crowd. Just real quick, the talent level of high school football in Texas, what do you, what do you see? Oh, talent, I mean, you just look across all the players that are in, a, in the NFL. I mean, a lot of them come from the state of Texas. So I understand, you know, Texas football, that's the mecca of football. I mean, the state's so big. Uh, high school football is very, it's like a religion here. I mean, it's all they sleep, eat, and drink football all year long. So to get a chance to start the year off in a rival game, that's going to be big for both teams. Looking for an exciting football game and uh, me being a part of it to, to do the coin flip. I always said, you know, uh, tails never fail, so I always vote tails. So whoever votes tails, maybe they'll win the kickoff. <laughs> Here, we got a coin for there you, Heinz. Go, right? Absolutely. You yeah. can take that. Keep yeah, it for yourself. I appreciate that. Thank you, dude. Thank appreciate you, you coming by. Appreciate yep, it. sir. Thank appreciate you, it. Good luck again this year. Thank you. <laughs> Head coach and of the XFL Brahmas. that was a different version of the press yeah. box. Yeah, well, that's. And a cool version yeah, as well. That's a guy who knows what he's talking yes, about right yes. there. <laughs> All right, so once again, thanks for Heinz Ward for stopping by. Hey, you know, we are just about 40 minutes away from kickoff, Brandeis and O'Connor. One thing that I don't think we can ever get used to when it comes to high school football are the injuries. Some are just bumps and bruises, but some can be life-changing like spinal injuries. The nonprofit Gridiron Heroes is an organization that helps players and families cope with the consequences of those injuries even if it's just finding treatments to one day help them get around town in their own vehicle. Gridiron Heroes has teamed up with Mobility Works to make the lives of these young athletes and their loved ones just a little easier. This vehicle opens the door to increased mobility by lowering restrictions on young men who are confined to a wheelchair after suffering a life-changing football spinal injury. When you turn this on and open the ramp, the vehicle lowers about six inches, so that lessens the angle uh, so that the person can come in so it's not as a steep of an angle, so it's easier to go inside. Just one of the many features Mobility Works can provide its customers when it comes to equipping a vehicle for our young man and his family so they can get out and see the world again. This was about uh, the uh, original place of the floor, so that entire the foot, almost foot and a half, is cut off. Ed Williams Ruffin is the general manager of Mobility Works and knows the impact a vehicle like this can have. It's life changing. And I'm pretty sure if you talk to anyone that's transitioned from a normal vehicle into a wheelchair accessible vehicle, they will tell you it's life changing. Chris Canales is one to talk to. He suffered a spinal cord injury playing defensive back for San Marcos Academy back in 2001. It's almost like you're having your freedom back. You know, it's just to be able to get out and just do something, you know, and not be stuck in the house all the time. When a young man is ready to expand his horizons, Ed is ready to take him there. The initial process is uh, doing a needs analysis, finding out exactly what the customer uh, needs. And once, Ed can make room for the person in the middle of the van or even take out the passenger seat if the person wants to ride shotgun. There is room for three or more family members in the back. They can even take it a step further. So if the person wants to do more than just ride in a van, actually want to get behind the wheel and drive, well, if they can only operate a gas pedal on the left side, they can accommodate that. If they can only use their hands, they can accommodate that too. That's really puts a smile on my face when someone says, you know what, hey, look, I want to drive. The customer works with technicians and evaluators to learn all the new driving techniques. Here's one that's a push, pull down. 
Whether driving or riding, it's not just life changing for the injured player, but for Ed as well. It's heartwarming. You know, it really is because you know how much, you know how important it is. You know really how important it is for these, uh, for these families to have this vehicle. We need to be there for these young athletes long term. And that's, you know, part of the key uh, on the long term basis is having something like a vehicle like this. By the way, just one of those vehicles that you saw in this piece could run anywhere from fifty to $100,000. And that is why KSAT is so proud to assist Gridiron Harris in the drive to help these young men. Our Vice President and General Manager Ashley Parker right now presenting a check for $30,000 to the head of Gridiron Zeros, Eddie Canales. So we appreciate everything that Eddie has done for these folks. And if you have donated, we thank you very much. If you have not donated, think about helping out this uh, wonderful organization who does so much for these young men. All right, coming up after the break, we will get you ready for game three of the KSF Pigskin Classic between Brandeis and O'Connor, the prime time matchup. Going to be a lot of fun to watch. Keep it right here because we'll be back live to the nice and cool Alamo Dome. It's very surreal. You know, you walk out on the field and it's exactly like the movies. Out and get chills. Looking up, seeing a lot of fans, uh, lights everywhere, big screens. Last year's games were pretty exciting, so excited to continue on the tradition. It's gonna feel great. It's not not being out there sweating like crazy, sun beaming down on you. Being the seven o'clock game, the Pigskin Classic, it's a it's a big thing to live up to. It'll be fun. It was very exciting. I mean, last year was really fun. I mean, it's honestly like it's like a college atmosphere, so there's definitely tension for sure. But, you know, it's a lot of fun actually playing with everyone you know. I mean, we know each other. We have grew up playing middle school football together, so it's going to be a fun time. It's definitely a lot, a lot of fun, and, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to be able to play there. It's the KSAT Pigskin Classic. It's Brandeis versus O'Connor in prime time on KSAT 12. Oh yeah, the big time, the O'Connor Panthers in the house, all the way from Holotus, came down 16.04, then down I-10 to the Alamo Dome for tonight's marquee matchup. The Panthers pulled up here around 5.30 this evening. O'Connor predicted to finish fifth in 29-6A, according to Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine, but the Panthers are not afraid of a little hard work and want to change those predictions for this season. In the meantime, the Brandeis Broncos are also here, arriving at the Alamo Dome, same time as O'Connor. The Broncos predicted to finish third in 28-6A in the preseason fix, and their defensive back, Jacob Boss, is favored as the preseason defensive MVP. That's a lot to live up to. Now let's stick in with all those folks out here on the field ready to rock and roll. And once again, good evening and welcome to the floor of the Alamo Dome. Behind me, the teams are about to come out and start warming up. We are about 30 minutes away from kickoff. This is the marquee matchup of our KSAT Pigskin Classic. So let's get you set up for tonight's big game. The O'Connor Panthers have been fun to watch in the playoffs over the years, and that is where they want to get back to. O'Connor has 26 returning lettermen, but went four and six in 2022, including a four and four district record. If they want to see a run for the state later in the fall, a win tonight would be a great start for the program considering they are going up against their rivals. Yeah, these two schools not that far from each other. I mean, we know each other. We have grew up playing middle school football together, so it's going to be a fun time. Is this big? There's definitely tension for sure, but, you know, it's a lot of fun actually playing with everyone you know and went to middle school with, so it's just fun. You don't like yeah. guys over there? I do, I do. Yeah, what's it like? You know, like, I mean, gonna, you know, like the same yeah, there's a lot of trash talk for sure. Oh, a lot yeah. of trash talk for oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the high schoolers doing a little trash talking out of their field. Meanwhile, for the Brandeis Broncos, they've got 27 returning lettermen. They beat O'Connor to start the season last year, 27-17. In fact, they have won two years in a row. Brandeis, 9-3 in 2022, including a very impressive 7-1 district record. They lost in the second round of the playoffs to Dripping Springs, so you know the returning players want to get that taste out of their mouths. And a big win tonight. Could erase it and get ready for the rest of the season? It's surreal. I mean, like, it, it's a big rivalry. It's, 
it's been going on since the schools opened. Uh, everybody who goes to Garcia grows up with each other. And they separate. It's like it's just a big fun game. Uh, I'm gonna be all in. I'm there to compete and there to win. So uh, just excited to play. What uh, what went through your mind when you found out that you guys would be part of the KSAT Pigskin Classic? Uh, a lot of excitement because last year's games were, were pretty exciting. So just uh, excited to continue on the tradition. Once again, we are 29 minutes away from kickoff. O'Connor and Brandeis, the marquee matchup prime time live right here on KSAT 12. And speaking of prime time, it's not just all happening on the field. It's happening up at the stands all over the Alamo Dome, and it's happening with our Adam Kasky. Adam? Oh, man, we are working the sideline here with Brandeis. It is a sea of orange here today. I hear these folks. So excuse the uh, compressor that's, uh, that's uh, juicing up and getting some air. We're going to launch some T-shirts with El Canyon de Kasky Roan. But first, we like to get the crowd a little excited. Start to make them work for it a little. Let's hop up here and talk to some folks. We're live on Canada. What's your name? I'm Fernanda. Fernanda. How loud are you going to be today? I'm going to be so loud. What's so far, just here before the game has started, what so far is your favorite part of this pigskin classic? Um, my awesome. Thank you, Fernanda. All right, back to you guys. We're, go We're the O'Connor Panther cheerleaders, and you're watching the KSAT Pigskin Classic. We'll be right back. Let's go, Panthers! Hi, we're the Brandeis Cheerleaders. And you're watching the KSAT Pigskin Classic. Live in prime time. Let's go, Brandeis! Cheerleaders for both schools fired up. Pep squads fired up. Fans coming in, taking over the stands. They're fired up. We know the players are ready for this thing. And we are just about 24 minutes away from kickoff of our marquee matchup, O'Connor and Brandeis. So, everybody's fired up. Let's hear from both coaches, see what they're feeling right now. Let's start with R.J. Marquez, who is with the head coach of O'Connor. All right, thanks a lot. We're here with Coach Molesky, the O'Connor Panthers coach. The moment is here, primetime game, KSAP Pixin Classic. What's going through your mind right now? Just uh, make sure we get out there on the football field. That's the first thing, you know. But there's obviously a lot of first-game jitters and excitement and, you know, just everything rolled up into one. Absolutely, Coach. So I know you're a big trenches guy. I know you know that's where the game is won or lost. Uh, what do we expect to see from the O'Connor Panthers? I know you got some hosses up front. Kind of control the game, maybe see what Brandeis kind of has well, hits you guys with. You know, I, I'm not naive to think that we're just going to go out there and, 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 you know, dominate role or anything. No, I mean, we're going to have to see what, what these guys are doing and where, where we can take advantage of some things. And obviously, I, I don't care what level, you know, running the football or controlling the line of scrimmage. Uh, that's huge in any football game, and that's not going to be any different tonight. Absolutely, Coach. And, of course, the rivalry here. Now, I know you guys played this game last year on a Friday night, but Saturday night here, both fan bases, what, you, what can you say about having this rivalry game here tonight? Well, I'll say this. It, it doesn't, we could play out in a cow pasture, and, and this game is, is going to be the special rivalry that it is. And, and then, you know, then you throw on top of it Elmo Dome and playing on TV and the buildup since back in the spring. I, I mean, that's just adding so many more things to what is already an amazing event anyway. All right, best of luck, Coach. Yeah, we'll be seeing you guys out there here in just a bit. Let's check out Gabe with Coach Bruce and Brandeis. Okay, thanks, RJ. I'm here with Coach Bruce from Brandeis. Coach, not your typical first game of the season. What do you tell your kids when you enter into a game that's kind of a state quarterfinal atmosphere in week one? What do you tell your kids? Well, the great thing is we're playing O'Connor, and there's two great communities getting together, and then it's just like a playoff atmosphere. You know, we just get to feel it a little earlier. And talk about that rivalry. This is one of the, the more fun rivalries. We had a, a 16 4 rivalry earlier this morning. Now we got this one. This is a fun game. Well, it is. You know, it's one of the best rivalries in the state of Texas. You know, these kids know each other. Some of them went to school together. So it's just like one of those old-fashioned backyard football games. Got to love it. Coach, uh, I want to talk to you about, uh, I know that this has been a story, but Coach Molesky, you guys are probably two of the most intense guys. You're both Judson guys. Talk about the guy that's going to have the headset on the other side of the field. Well, I know he's going to be prepared. Yeah. I know that he's going to have his guys ready. And, you know, and this is fun for us. It's like chess. Coach, what's the key to victory for you guys to win today? 
we got to control the ball and we got to make stops when appropriate. Charlie, best of luck. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys, back to the desk. All right, if you're watching at home, you can also be a part of the action. That barcode right there will get you to vote for the player of the game. All you got to do is take your picture of that barcode. It's sponsored by Davis Law Firm. Keep an eye out throughout the night. We're going to pop that barcode up throughout the evening, throughout the game. And after the game, we're going to announce the player of the game between Brandeis and O'Connor. And we are just now we're down to 21 minutes away from this exciting night of high school football here in the Alamo Dome. First off, we want to thank all the crew down here on the field helping us put this pregame show together. We're going to take it up to Larry Stotzen, Larry Ramirez and Bobby Stotzenberger. They're going to be calling the game for you tonight. And then, of course, Mary Rominger will have all your big game coverage later on tonight after the game on the night beat. But now, stay tuned. Just moments away from our marquee magic primetime, O'Connor and Brandeis. We'll see you after the game. Enjoy. <laughs> 